whatever it may be. How how much of the public, on a percentage, do you think actually knows about this? Well, I, I'm sure I don't know on a percentage basis. I can tell you what I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm trying to make it as public as possible. Uh, at John Ratzlaff at the Tesla Book Company, and, and Bill will give you the address, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, maybe we can give it on the air here. Certainly can. I've written a series of papers on electromagnetics, and the part four that John publishes I gave some of the mechanisms about which this stuff occurs. And uh, just at the end, I mentioned the weather engineering. Now, the next paper will be on weather engineering uh, by itself. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do is make the stuff public so that everybody does know about it, and then maybe you will tune in and have your local weatherman make a comment on it. In Tom's previous papers, uh, Dave, you'll find a rather uh, detailed description of the scalar wave. Now, you can make your own scalar wave transmitter, in fact. And I would recommend that you uh, write John Rodsliff up there at Tesla Book Company. I, uh, you, you have that address at the tip of your fingers. I know it's on Magnolia. Yes, it's, uh, it's uh, Tesla Book Company, 1580 Magnolia. 15... Right. And that's Millbrae, uh -huh. California, 94030. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I, I think you're uh, really doing a service to the American people. Uh, more people need to know about this. This isn't something that... Uh, uh, you read in the National Enquirer, you're, uh, you're definitely qualified to do this because, I mean, you can give an example and uh, they don't, uh, your average Midwestern mentality, I wouldn't say uh, besides not caring about it, they just don't know about it or less if you saw it, like if you were watching Family Feud and they were asking a, a question, you know, someone's altering our weather, you know, the person wouldn't go Russian, you know, he wouldn't turn around and go, survey set, you know. Right. <laughs> Russians, uh, two people in the audience would probably say that. Well, what happens you do that, the eyes go to the top of the head, and uh, they want to get on to the next soap opera, and it's sort of a sad commentary of where media has led the American mind. Exactly. Well, you and, know, uh, yeah. the Bill Jenkins show is one of the few shows that will allow somebody to mention a subject like that and go into the detail that's necessary for you to understand it. Yeah, I understand that. Most of the people that will call you and ask for a comment on something like this will say, you know, give it to me in, in three minutes flat. And right. that's impossible. You can't do that. Hey, no. I know you got a lot of other callers. I have one more question. You're talking about the Russians doing this as a, as a, as a possible uh, offense or defense, whatever you call it. Can't this be used for uh, countries that have uh, extreme droughts to produce rain to, uh, for their crops? Oh, absolutely. It, uh, the... The fact that they weaponize this has nothing to do with the fact that the scalar technology has a, a marvelous array of things that can be done for the benefit of humankind. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to see is a widespread development of it for the benefit of humankind. In medicine alone, it can do spectacular things. I would suspect, Tom, that the, uh, this research was really generated out of a need to move weather in the Soviet Union uh, into their agricultural areas. They've had a lot of trouble over there. They've had to buy a lot of wheat from the United States, and after they found out they could do it, they could found out it was a weapon system and started playing with that, too. Right. That's unfortunate, but it seems like uh, that's what uh, the, the more interest is in, rather than uh, preserving life, uh, uh, destroying it. Uh, one last quote, uh, put a little light on the subject. I was just thinking if the, if the French did it, maybe it uh, might start raining Perrier water. <laughs> but it was nice talking with you, and you're very informative. And I've got your address, and I will be writing it. I just wanted to say to all the other listeners that they should uh, write in on this and uh, be more to open to uh, uh, human beings like yourself. Well, thank, thank you very much, Dave. It's very good. Have a good night now. Okay, Dave. Good for you. Randy, you're on. How are you doing? Good evening, Simon Bill. Yes. Okay. Now, I'm not an engineer, but I'd appreciate it if you'd recap a little bit, um, if you'd follow me while I frame this so that I understand it. Are you saying, in effect, that these transmitters in, in the Soviet Union send out currents that cross, in a sense, like an XY graph, and that those points can be plotted anywhere in the country or the world, for that matter? Yes. And at that point, that nodal point, um, these radio clouds form. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Now, what controls, then, the distance in the atmosphere from the ground? How high? These, For example, you said you were flying over 35,000. You could see them below you. What controls that distance? Okay, you've asked me one of the questions. At the present time, I do not know, and I don't uh -huh. mind telling you when you hit something I don't know. All right. I don't know how you control how high it is, how you get it out of the ground or up in the atmosphere and control the altitude. That I do not know. Okay, now, my other question about that. Um, with the incredible amount of general electromagnetic radiation in the atmosphere from everything from, you know, microwave ovens and, you know, ship-to-shore transmissions, everything, TV stations, 
wouldn't there be a breakup just from the enormous amount of uh, um, EMR that would cause all these clouds to sort of scatter rather than have a, uh, a coherency to them? Well, uh, from the normal stuff that you get, uh, by the way, there are scalar currents in the Earth, and uh, it's my theory that the normal striations that you get in, in great number in, in large masses of clouds are caused really by interactions between the scalar currents in the Earth and resonance with the cloud. I think the Earth is already doing uh, scalar weather engineering. Naturally formed? Naturally. Or naturally. But, uh, I think that these particular signatures and the things I'm talking about here are abnormal. They are unnatural. They are man-made. And certainly the adjustment in of the network was picked up and detected here in this country. And, yep. Yep. and the fact that these little virtual transmitters exist throughout the country, that fact was picked up and measured by the people who are out there in the field measuring it, and they reacted to that very quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, certain parts of this thing were detected, mm -hmm. and the rest of it you have to piece together like piecing a jigsaw puzzle together. But if you do know something about the scalar electromagnetics, then it all makes sense. It all adds up, and then you see the signatures in the sky, and you know what you're looking at. Now, does the... What was I going to say? The, the um, system, the government was going to set up the Pentagon to, uh, to transmit across, I don't know, seven states to the oceans to control the submarines. That's Is that normal similar? normal ELF type uh, transmission. Yes, we know that normal ELF will, uh, that's extra low frequency, you know, you get the frequency down very low, right. and by very low we might mean 30 hertz, for example, we, you know, somewhere in that region, 60 hertz, 50 hertz, 30 hertz. Uh, if you get down to that region, we know that wave will go through the ocean. Mm -hmm. The normal electromagnetic wave of that frequency will go on down through the ocean to the sub. Now, the problem you have there is you don't have very much data rate. It takes you forever to send a message of any length to that submarine. And so, uh, you know, what people would like to have would be something up in the megahertz band where you can send the message very quickly. Now, we abandoned that project, as I understand, because uh, different local governments were complaining. I don't think we've abandoned the ELF at all. No, we haven't. It's, uh, it's running full tilt. Oh, I thought a number of the states were absolutely opposed to having it run across their lines. Well, uh, certainly that's been true. That's yeah. correct. But uh, the project is still ongoing. I see. Now, what about the U.S. intelligence community? Do they not even look at these, uh, at these items? Or do they, and simply are, are mute about it? Okay, let me, that's a very important point that you raise, and let me address that just a little bit. Mm -hmm. The intelligence analyst is, let's say he's an electrical engineer, or he's a physicist, or, you know, a technically trained person, but his training is from the orthodox scientific community. Now, scalar waves and scalar technology does not exist in the normal textbook, nor is it taught at the normal university. Okay, if you have one of these people or a group or an agency that gets interested in this area and says, maybe there's something to it. Now, they're spending taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. The first thing they have to do, they have to turn to the orthodox scientific community. They try to turn to the best people they know. And they say, tell us about scalar electromagnetics so we can train our analysts and so they'll recognize the stuff when they see it. And the orthodox scientific community doesn't have scalar electromagnetics in it, so it says there is no such thing. It is all a bunch of hooey. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. They think you're a nut in this whole well, theory. Of course. Uh, it's you know, that's, that's a kind word. Mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, uh, the intelligence analyst then, since he's spending taxpayer money, is certainly not going to go against the expert advice that he, he gets from the scientific community. And by the way, justifiably so. I'm on his side in that in that thing, mm. even though it goes against me. Can't blame him. That's right. He does. He would not spend taxpayer money on every will of the wisp that comes along. What I'm trying to do is say that this is not a will of the wisp. This is real. It's there. It can be measured and can be detected if you build the detectors. And I can tell you enough about it so that you can go in the laboratory and start developing the detectors, and so that you can actually build some of the effects and see that it's real. And then you take over from there. No, so that's what I'm trying to do, and it has to be attacked in this fashion so that enough of the orthodox scientific community changes, then we'll have the intelligence analyst change, and all of a sudden intelligence will be full of it. Is the orthodox community looking at this now? I mean, uh, you some have any parts people? of it are mm -hmm. by people who are being very careful that they're